Committee, we have a really, really long agenda, um, most of which is on consent. Um, so I'll do a quick run through the roll. We um, do you have a public comment period. Um, however, no one has signed up for a public comment for this meeting, so we can go ahead with the calling of the roll and then going through at least the consent calendar. So in addition to myself, Councilmember Gamble is present, Councilmember Murphy, Councilmember Parker is here. There he is, different chair. Vice Chair Rutherford is here, Councilmember Van Rees and Councilmember Welsh, which gives us seven at the moment. I'll mark others present as they arrive and then we're starting early to try to get through everything on time. Um, and with that, I will go through items that I have. Um, I think the um, council office staff have given uh, committee members at least a listing of items that we have on a uh, schedule to be on the consent calendar. It's, it's a list of numbers. Um, if you need to get a full version of the agenda, um, those are, are printed out in the uh, vestibule um, for the actual bill numbers. But uh, hopefully if you have an item that um, you need to pull for some reason that, that you are familiar with what that bill number is. But I'll go ahead and get started reading the consent agenda or what I believe will be the consent agenda. So first of those is item for bills on second reading, item number one, ordinance bill 2023-1894. The sponsors are Councilmembers Lee, Roten, Withers, and Syracuse approves the Director of Public Property Administration or designee to accept a donation on real property consisting of 5.08 acres located at Zero Carruthers Road for the site of a new fire station. Item number two, Ordinance Bill 2023-1988. The sponsors, Councilmember Parker, amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from RS5 to SP Zoning for property located at, uh, at 1003 Douglas. Hey, can, is that the one that they wanted to pull? 1988 and, and 89? Yeah. Councilmember Parker, did you say you did want to pull 88 and 89 for 1003 Douglas? Yeah. It is on second reading. One second, okay, all right, thank you. So I'll go ahead and read that again. So that's item number two, Bill 2023-1988. Sponsors comes from Parker. Um, Ends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from RS5 to SP Zoning for property located at 1003 Douglas Avenue to permit a maximum of 284 multifamily residential units. Uh, the accompanying bill is item number three, uh, Bill 2023-1989, which applies materials restrictions to that property. We're gonna skip item number four. Item number five, Ordinance Bill 2023-2011, the sponsor of Council Members Roten and Withers approves a lease agreement between Metro Government and Donaldson Corporate Center LP for office space at 3055 Lebanon Road. Item number six, Ordinance Bill 2023-2012, the sponsors of Council Members Sledge, Roten, Withers and Hurt approves three agreements relating to the acquisition of a parcel of property and improvements located at 607 Bass Street. Item number seven, Ordinance uh, Bill 2023-2013, the sponsor to Council Members Henderson, Roten, Withers, and Hurt, approves and authorizes the Director of Public Property Administration to accept a donation of real property consisting of approximately 0.53 acres located at 7166 Highway 100 to increase parkland for Edwin Warner Park. Item number eight, Ordinance Bill 2023-2014, the sponsors to Council Members Henderson, Roten, Withers, and Hurt approves and authorizes the Director of Public Property Administration to accept a donation of real property consisting of approximately 7.81 acres located at 7156 Highway 100 to increase parkland for Edwin Warner Park. Item number nine, Ordinance Bill 2023-2015, the sponsors to Council Members Henderson, Roten, Withers, and others approves and authorizes the Director of Public Property Administration to accept a donation of real property consisting of approximately 13.18 acres located at 6949 Highway 70 South to increase parkland for conservation of open space and local flora and fauna. Item number 10, Ordinance Bill 2023 2018, the sponsors of Councilmembers Withers and Pulley authorizes 10. I've got an amendment on that one, sorry about that. So we'll skip number 10. Item number 11, Ordinance Bill 2023-2019, the sponsors of Council Members Taylor, Withers, Pulley, and Tombs, authorizes PARK with an E, P-A-R-K-E, -E, PARK West Investments Partners, LLC, to install, construct, and maintain underground encroachments on the right-of-way located at 3415 Murphy Road. 
Item number 12, Ordinance BL 2023-2020, the sponsor of Consumers Withers and Pulley authorizes LMC Town, T-O-W-N-E, property owner LLC to install, construct, and maintain encroachments in the right of way located at 808 Garfield Street. Item number 13, Ordinance Bill 2023-2022, the sponsors of Consumers Welsh, Withers, and Pulley authorizes Metro Government to negotiate and accept permanent and temporary easements for the Mashburn Road Stormwater Improvement Project for three properties located at 2822 Mashburn Road and 133 and 134 East Thompson Lane. Item number 14, Ordinance Bill 2023-2023. Um, that the sponsors are consumers withers and pulley authorizes Metro Government of Nashville to abandon a portion of existing public storm, stormwater drainage easement rights for property located at 7330 Tolbert Road. Item number 15, Ordinance Bill 2023-2024. Sponsors are consumers cash withers and pulley authorizes Metro Government to accept new public sanitary sewer manhole for property located at 20, 2803 12th Avenue South. Item number 16, Ordinance Bill 2023-2025, the sponsor to consumers Tombs, Withers, and Pulley authorizes Metro Government to accept new public sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes and easements for two properties located at 3465 and 3453 West Hamilton Avenue, also known as Hamilton Place, Lot 2. Item number 17, Ordinance Bill 2023-2026, the sponsor to consumers Tombs, Withers, and Pulley authorizes Metro Government to accept new public water main for two properties located at 1100 Spurgeon Avenue and 1400 B Napoleon Street, also known as 1110 Baptist World Center Development. Item number 18, Ordinance Bill 2023-2027, the sponsors of Consumers Withers and Pulley authorizes Metro Government to accept new public sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes and easements for two properties located at 1306 Rural Hill Road and 727 Bell Road. Item number 19, Ordinance Bill 2023-2028, the sponsors of Consumers Swope, Withers and Pulley authorizes Metro Government to accept new public water and sanitary sewer mains for hiring assemblies, sanitary sewer manholes and easements for property located at Zermatt, Z-E-R-M-A-T-T. Avenue unnumbered, also known as Rose Monte, M-O-N-T-E, Phase 4. Item number 20, Ordinance Bill 2023-2029, the sponsor to consumers Taylor's Taylor, Withers, Pulley, and Tombs authorizes Metro Government to abandon existing public water main, sanitary sewer main, and sanitary sewer manhole, and to accept new public water main, sanitary sewer main, and sanitary sewer manhole for property located at 1801 Patterson Street. Item number 20. One, Ordinance Bill 2023-2031, sponsored by Consumers Withers and Pulley, authorizes Metro Government to abandon existing public water and sanitary sewer mains, sanitary sewer manholes and easements, and to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains for hiring assemblies, sanitary sewer manholes and easements for two properties located at 301 15th Avenue North and 302 McMillan Street, also known as 15th Avenue North Mixed-Use Development. Item number 22, Ordinance Bill 20. 23-2032, sponsors of consumers Withers and Pulley, authorizes Metro Government to abandon an existing public water and sanitary sewer mains, sanitary sewer manholes and easements, and to accept new public sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer manholes and easements for six properties located at Victory Avenue, South First Street, Shelby Avenue, Woodland Street, Titans Way, and Russell Street, also known as the Nissan Stadium Infrastructure Project. Item number 23, Ordinance Bill 2023-2033, the sponsors of Councilmembers Withers and Pulley authorizes the Metro Government to accept new public sanitary sewer main, sanitary sewer main holes and easements for two products located at 9784 Concord Road and Glenmore Lane, unnumbered in Williamson County, which sometimes does happen with our sewer system. Moving on to bills on third reading. Item number 24, Ordinance Bill 2023-1758 by Councilman Van Rees amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from RS10 to SP Zoning on properties located at 3302 Walton Lane and Walton Lane Unnumbered and on part of 3300 and 3344 Walton Lane to permit 175 residential units, all of which is described herein. The next item, or, uh, 25, Ordinance Bill 2023-1759 by Councilman Van Rees applies materials restrictions to that property. Item 26 has a substitute. We need to skip that one. Moving on to item number 27, BL 2023-1815, the sponsors Councilmember Murphy amends uh, the Metro Zoning Code by changing from RS5 to SP Zoning on property located at 307 Susanna Court at the corner of Dakota Avenue and 38th Avenue North, located with a, within a planned unit development overlay encompassing 9.44 acres to permit 187 multifamily residential units. 
Item number 28, which is Ordinance Bill 2023-1816 by Councilman Murphy applies materials restrictions to that property. Item number 29, Ordinance Bill 2023-1817 by Councilman Murphy cancels a planned unit of development at that property. So we have three items for that particular project. Um, moving on for item number 30, um, Ordinance Bill 2023-1834 by Councilmember Hall amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from CL to MULANS, zoning for property located at 4026 Clarksville Pike. Um, Item number 31, or, uh, BL 2023-1879 by Council Members Lee and Withers amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from CL to IR zoning for property located at 936 Firestone Parkway. Item number 32, Ordinance Bill 2023-1911, sponsors Councilmember Toombs, amends the Metro Zoning Code by amending a specific plan on property located at 2306 Brick Church Pike. Zoned SP and located in a quarter design overlay district, commencing 1.36 acres to permit two additional multifamily resident residential units for a total of 97. Item number 33, Ordinance Bill 2023-1912 by Councilmember Gamble amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from AR2A to R10, excuse me, by changing from AR2A, AR2A and R10 to SP zoning on properties located at Hickory Hills Boulevard unnumbered and Brick Church Pike unnumbered. Um, 42 feet west of Summertime Drive, encompassing 92.63 acres to permit a mixed-use development. Item number 34, Ordinance Bill 2023-1913 by Councilmember Gamble applies materials restrictions to that property. Item number 35, Ordinance Bill 2023-1914 by Councilmember Syracuse amends the Metro Zoning Code by amending a specific plan on property located at 1636 Lebanon Pike to permit 48 multifamily residential units. Item number 36 uh, has amendments by Councilmember Gamble, so we'll come back to that one. Item number 37, Ordinance Bill 2023-1920 by Councilmember Syracuse amends the Metro Zoning Code by amending a neighborhood landmark overlay district on property located at 2250 Lebanon Pike, zoned RS20 and R8, and partially within the downtown Donaldson Urban Design Overlay District, and also partially within a historic landmark overlay district uh, covering 5.92 acres to permit 36 hotel rooms and special events. Item number 38, Ordinance Bill 2023-1921 by Council Members Taylor and Toombs amends the Metro Zoning Code by applying a historic landmark overlay district for property located at 1926 10th Avenue North, zoned R6 and located within a Daydew overlay district. Um, it covers 0 0.17 acres. Item number 39, Ordinance Bill 2023-1922 by Council Member Taylor and Toombs uh, applies materials restrictions to that property. Item number 40, Ordinance Bill 2023-1923. Okay, th this is another one where we have three on the same property. So we've uh, already applied the historic landmark overlay. We've done the materials restrictions. This one um, is the neighborhood landmark, which changes the uses. So that is item number 40, Ordinance Bill 2023-1923 by Council Members Taylor and Toombs. Um, by amending the zoning code, by applying a neighborhood landmark district on this property, and it's a historic church building, just if anyone's wondering. Um, item number 41, Ordinance Bill 2023-1924 by Council Member Toombs applies a contextual overlay district to various properties located north of Ridge Acres Drive and East Oak Creek Wood Drive, zoned RS10, covers 53.62 acres. Item number 42, Ordinance Bill 2023-1925 by Council Member Gamble amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from R10 and SP zoning for property located at White's Creek Pike unnumbered, just south of Green Lane, covering 14.68 acres to permit all uses of MUL, with the exception of the uses listed as prohibited within the SP. Item number 43, Ordinance Bill 2023-1926 by Councilmember Gamble authorizes building and materials restrictions on that property. Item number 44 by Council Member, item number 44 is Ordinance Bill 2023-1927 by Council Member Parker amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing a specific plan on properties located at 515 and 516 Foster Street. Uh, zoned SP covers 
9.51 acres to increase the number of hotel rooms and to adjust the square footage permitted for commercial and office uses. Item number 45, Ordinance Bill 2023-1928 by Council Member Syracuse amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from R10 and OR20, a zoning for property located at 2720 Old Elm Hill Pike. Item number 46, Ordinance Bill 2023-1929 by Council Member Toombs amends the Metro Zoning Code by applying a contextual overlay district to various properties properties located north of Pine Ridge Drive and east of Dickerson Pike, zoned RS10 covers 119.3 acres. Item number 47, Ordinance Bill 2023-1930 by Council Member Gamble amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from AR2A to RS30 zoning for property located at 4903 Laws Road. Item number 48, oh. Ordinance Bill 2023-1931 by Council Members Taylor and Toombs amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from MUGA to SP Zoning for properties located at 2400 Elliston Place, 207 and 209 24th Avenue North, and 206 Reedhurst Avenue at the corner of Elliston Place and 24th Avenue North, covering 1.38 acres to permit 300 multifamily residential units and 12,500 square feet of commercial use. Item number 49, Ordinance Bill 2023-1932 by Council Member Taylor's and Council Members Taylor and Toombs applies materials restrictions to that property. Item 50, Ordinance Bill 2023-1933 by Council Member Sledge amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from CN and R6 to SP zoning for various properties located along Bransford Avenue and 511 Benton Avenue at the southeast corner of Bransford and Benton, covering 4.33 acres to permit a mixed-use development. Item number 51, Ordinance Bill 2023-1934 by Council Member Sledge applies materials restrictions to that property. Item number 52, Ordinance Bill 2023-1935 by Council Member Toombs amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from R10 to SP Zoning for property located at 2724 Tucker, Tucker Road, covering 2.4 acres to permit six two-family structures on six lots for a total of 12 units. Item number 53, Ordinance Bill 2023-1936 by Council Member Toombs applies materials restrictions to that property. Item number 54, Ordinance Bill 2023-1937 by Councilman Parker amends the Metro Zoning Code by change from RS5 to R6A for properties located at 817 Douglas Avenue. Item number 55, Ordinance Bill 2023-1938 by Council Member Sledge amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from IWD to MULA-NS zoning for properties located at 1514 and 1516 Fourth Avenue South approximately 170 feet south of Bianca Page Way, covering 1.43 acres. I always want to give a shout out to Bianca Page. Item number 56, Ordinance Bill 2023-1939, as amended by Council Member Gamble, amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from CS to MULA-NS zoning for properties located at 3976 Dickerson Pike and Dickerson Pike Unnumbered. Item number... 57 has an amendment, so we'll need to skip that one. Item number 58, Ordinance Bill 2023-1941 by Council Member Toombs. Um, I, th I think we can go ahead and do this one. This author says building materials restrictions for um, a specific plan zoning district located at 3101 Doak, D-O-A-K Avenue. Um, to permit 14 detached multifamily residential units. This is the materials restrictions. My understanding is that this one does not have an amendment, so we'll go ahead and get this one taken care of for good measure for now. Item number 59, Ordinance Bill 2023-1942 by Council Member Syracuse amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from RS10 to ON zoning for property located at 2894 Elm Hill Pike, uh, covering 0.29 acres. Ordinance num item number 60, Ordinance Bill 2023-1943 by Council Member Hauser amends the Metro Zoning Code by change from CL to SP Zoning for property located at 7986 Coley Davis Road, east of Scenic River Lane, located within a planned new development covering 1.27 acres to permit 26 multifamily residential units. Item number 61, Ordinance Bill 2023-1944 by Council Member Hauser applies materials restrictions to that property. Item number 62, 
Ordinance Bill 2023-1945 by Council Member Hauser amends the Metro Zoning Code by canceling a portion of a plan due to development located at 7986 Coley Davis Road. So that just cancels the pod in, in that above property. That's another one. We have three there. Item number 63, Ordinance Bill 2023-1946 by Councilmember Hager amends the Metro Zoning Code by amending a specific plan on a portion of property located at 3939 Old Hickory Boulevard covering 9.89 acres to modify the layout and unit types, increase the maximum building height, and designate a portion of the property for golf course use. Item number 64, Ordinance Bill 2023-1947 by Councilmember Sledge amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from RM20ANS to OR20ANS. Excuse me, by changing from RM20ANS and OR20ANS to RM20A, RM40A, and OR40ANS. For various properties south of Lafayette Street, general, generally spanning from First Avenue South to west of Lewis Street, along the north of Hart Street, and within the Wedgwood Houston Chestnut Hill Urban Design Overlay, covering 57.61 acres. Item number 65, Ordinance Bill 2023-1948 by Council Member Toombs amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from RS 7.5 to R15 zoning for property located at 574 Ewing Drive, covering 0.85 acres. Item number 66, Ordinance Bill 2023-1949 by Council Members Taylor and Toombs amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from RS5 to SP zoning for property located at 3013 Batavia Street covering 0.26 acres to permit three residential units. Item number 67, Ordinance Bill 2023-1950 by Council Members Taylor and Toombs uh, applies materials restrictions to those properties. Item number 68, Ordinance Bill 2023-1951 as amended by Council Member Young amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from R10 to SP Zoning on properties located at 203, 205, 209, 217, 219, 253, 255, 257, 259, 261, Liberty Lane, as well as 215B, 257B, and 253B, Liberty Lane, approximately 251 feet west of People's Court, which used to be a television show, uh, covering 26.59 acres uh, to, to permit 106 multifamily residential units. Item number 69, Ordinance Bill 2023-1952 by Councilmember Young um, applies building materials restrictions to that um, proper to all of that property. Um, I think that probably is going to come off of consent. Actual overlays. Um, okay, so the next one. Um, I would encourage folks, if you do wish to pull this item off of consent, let me know now. But this is uh, item number 70, Ordinance Bill 2023-1953 by Council Member Hall. Uh, amends the Metro Zoning Code by applying a contextual overlay district to various properties located north of Ashland City Highway and east of Fairview Drive, zoned RS-15, covering 278.19 acres. Seeing no hands, I'm gonna leave that on consent for now. Um, item number 71, Ordinance Bill 2023-1954 by Council Member Toombs. Amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from R... Oops, I'm sorry, that one has an amendment. 71 needs to come off. Item number 72, Ordinance Bill 2023-1955 by Council Members Stiles and Toombs. Amends the Metro Zoning Code by amending a specific plan for various properties located on the north side of an old Franklin Road road between Cane Ridge Road and Interstate 24 zoned SP covering 294.15 acres to permit 300 additional multifamily residential units and revise sub-district boundaries, development standards, and signage standards. <laughs> Item number 73, Ordinance Bill 2023-1956 by Councilmember Van Rees amends the Metro Zoning Code by amending a specific plan on property located at 2634 Bethwood Drive and 0 Allenwood Drive, uh, a little bit east of Oakwood Avenue, to reduce the previously approved open space. This uh, rezoning covers 14.04 acres. Item number 74, Ordinance Bill 2023-1957 by Councilman Van Rees authorizes building material restrictions on that property that I read 
just before. Item number 75, Ordinance Bill 2023-1958 by Councilmember Van Rees, amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from ST, SP to RS 7.5 zoning for a portion of property located at uh, 2634 Bethwood Drive, approximately 40 feet east of Slayton Drive. <laughs> Item number 76, Ordinance Bill 2023-1959 by Council Members Hancock and Allen amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from RS, uh, excuse me, by changing from RS 15 to SP zoning for property located at 1231 Pawnee Trail, covering 12.8 acres to permit 36 <laughs> detached multifamily residential units. Item number 77, Ordinance Bill 2023-1960 by Council Members Hancock and Allen I mean, authorizes building material restrictions on that property that we just read. Item number 78 by Council Member Toombs has a substitute, so we will skip that one. Item number 79, Ordinance Bill 2023-1962 by Council Member Roberts amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from IR to R6A zoning for properties located at 4421, 4423, 4425, 4427, and 4427B Michigan Avenue, covering 0 0.35 acres. Item number 80, Ordinance Bill 2023-1963 by Councilmember Hauser amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from R40 to SP Zoning for a portion of properties located at 7750 Highway 70 South to permit office and vocational school uses. Item number 81, Ordinance Bill 2023-1964 by Councilmember Hager amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from RS5 to SP Zoning on property located at 2411 Lakeshore Drive covering 1.79 acres to permit 16 multifamily residential units. Item number 82 by Councilmember Pulley has a substitute, so we'll come back to that one. Item number 83 by Councilmember Swope has, a, has an amendment, so we'll come back to that one. Um, I think it's probably okay, Councilmember Swope, to go ahead and take the materials one on consent. I need to have the amendment on there, yeah. So item number 84, Ordinance Bill 2023-1967 by Council Member Swope authorizes building materials restrictions for properties located at 6415 and 6419 Holt Road and 6401 Nolansville Pike, um, which we'll talk about in more detail momentarily. Item number 85 by Council Member Rosenberg has some amendments, so we'll take, we'll come back to that one. Um, item number 86, I think we'll go ahead and take it's the building materials restrictions. Item number 86 is Ordinance Bill 2023-1969 by Councilmember Rosenberg, which applies building materials restrictions or requirements for an SP proposal at 1084 Morton Mill Road. Item number 87 by Councilmember Van, oh, excuse me, 87 is Ordinance Bill 2023-1970 by Councilmember Van Rees amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from RS10 to SP Zoning for property located at 212 Sunset Drive, covering 0 0.52 acres to permit five multifamily residential units. Item number 88. Ordinance Bill 2023-1971 by Councilmember Roten amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from R10 to SP Zoning for property located at Bell Road unnumbered at the intersection of Old Hager Boulevard and Bell Road covering 4.42 acres to permit 112 multifamily residential units. Item number 89. Ordinance Bill 2023-1972 by Councilmember Roten uh, authorizes building material restrictions for the above property. Here's another one. I just want to give folks a chance. If you wish to pull this off consent right now, let me know. But uh, if not, we'll leave it on. Uh, this is item number 90, Ordinance Bill 2023-1973 by Council Member Hall. Amends the Metro Zoning Code by applying a contextual overlay district to various properties located north of West Hamilton Road and east of Meadow Road zoned RS-15, covering 99.54 acres. Anyone wish to take that off of consent for any reason? Seeing no hands, I will leave it on for now. Item number at 91, Ordinance Bill 2023-1974, the sponsors of Council Member Stiles and Tombs amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from AR2A to SB Zoning on properties located at 12782 Old Tigre Boulevard and Old Tigre Boulevard unnumbered at uh, the southwest corner of Old Tigre Boulevard and Preserve Boulevard covering 13.37 acres to permit 80 multifamily residential units. Item number 92, Ordinance Bill 2023-1975 by Council Members Stiles and Tombs authorizes building material restrictions on the above property. 
Item number 93, substitute ordinance bill 2023-1976 by Councilmember Young, amends the Metro Zoning Code by chain, changing the zoning from R10 to SP zoning for properties located at People's Court. I'm not gonna make that joke again. And Gallatin Pike, unnumbered, um, approximately 170 feet north of Vietnam Veterans Boulevard, covering 89.05 acres to permit a maximum of 445 multifamily residential units. Item number 94, substitute ordinance bill 2023-1977 by Councilmember Young applies building material restrictions to that property. Item number 95, ordinance bill 2023-1978 by Councilmembers Hancock and Allen amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from RS80 to SP on property located at 1938 Neely's Bend Road, I'm sure that is, um, to permit two residential units covering 5.26 acres. Item number 96, Ordinance Bill 2023-1979 by Council Members Hancock and Allen um, authorizes building material restrictions on the above property. Item number 97, Ordinance Bill 2023-1980 by Council Member Welsh amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from RS5 to R6A for property located at 2229 Foster Avenue. Um, um, and that's it. Uh, item number 98, Ordinance Bill 2023-1981 by Council Members Taylor and Toombs amends the Metro Zoning Code by change from RS5 to R6A, zoning for property located at 703 29th Avenue North, covering 0 0.14 acres. Item number 99, Bill 2023-1982 by myself uh, amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from R10 to R6, zoning for property located at Riverside Drive unnumbered, um, I will just describe it as being near the Shelby Park entrance off of Riverside. Um, so that is a straight zoning. Item number 100, uh, Ordinance Bill 2023-1983 by Councilmember Parker amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from RS5 to R6A for property located at 315 Edith Avenue. Item number 101, Ordinance Bill 2023-1984 by Council Members O'Connell and Sledge amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from IWD to MUNA, zoning for property located at 19, excuse me, for property located at 195 at Little Green Street, covering 0 0.15 acres. Item number 102, almost there, but not quite. 102 is Ordinance Bill 2023-1985 by Council Member Roberts amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from R6 to CS zoning for properties located at 5108B Tennessee Avenue and 5100 Tennessee Avenue, covering 0 0.35 acres. Item number 102, Three, Ordinance Bill 2023-1986 by Council Member Sledge amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from IR to MULA and S zoning for property located at Hagen Street unnumbered at the northwest corner of Hagen Street and Merritt Avenue covering 0 0.3 acres. Last but certainly not least, item number 104, Ordinance Bill 2023-1987 that sponsors Council Member Syracuse amends the Metro Zoning Code by canceling a planned due development for properties located at 2515 and 2525 McGavick Pike, approximately 900 feet west of Music Valley Drive, zoned CA, covering 3.65 acres. So that is what I have read as the consent agenda, but um, we will see what needs to happen now. Um, Council Member Van Rees. Yes, I just need to be marked as abstention on two items. Okay. Item number 56, that's Bill 2023-1939. And I've just been informed I also need to abstain on item number 90-1973. So for item number 56 by Councilmember Gamble. Correct. Dickerson Pike. Yep. So one abstention. The overlay and the other one 1973. Was, and the other one was item number 90. Is that what you said, nine, number 90, 1973? You would like to be recorded as an abstention. Any other abstentions while I'm at it? Um, on this committee. Okay. Um, any other items to be pulled? And let me make sure I update. So Councilman O'Connell has joined us, which I'm glad to see any other committee members. Uh, Councilman Toombs. That's also, so we are now up to one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. We are now up to nine will be our count. All right, uh, seeing no additional hands, uh, I will call on Vice Chair Rutherford. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of the consent agenda. Wonderful. Do we have a second? We have a second. Any other discussion on the consent calendar? All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so we have moved a very lengthy consent calendar um, and we will go back to the items that were not on consent. So, what should we do for this one since the, should Council Member Murphy take it? He's got a deferral, that's right. That's right. Okay, so for item number four, um, which is Ordinance Bill 2023-1992, by Councilmember Young. This ordinance amends section 2.24.230 of the Metro Code pertaining to community meetings. We have a letter from the sponsor, Councilmember Young, requesting a one meeting deferral. Um, any discussion on that? Vice Chair Rutherford, would you bring a motion for a deferral? Motion for approval. Okay, so we have a motion for a one meeting deferral. Is there a second? Oh, I'm so, Vice Chair Rutherford, I'm sorry, that request is for a one, a one meeting deferral. I'm sorry. sorry, folks were talking, so I didn't catch that, but I will make the motion this for a the, one meeting deferral. Okay, and so we have a motion for a one meeting deferral, and this, what's that? Okay, we have a letter, but yeah, you're, you're welcome to, I will call on Council Member Murphy. Yes, so um, just to update everybody, we do have a new amendment from uh, Councilman Mendez, but uh, because we're going to continue to work on this, because neither amendment really addresses the menu, the venue, or the seating, we feel that it needs some more work, and so we'd like to move for a one meeting deferral. With no amendments placed on it, just move. Correct, as amended, defer it as it is, and then we'll come back with a, an amendment that address, addresses the menu, the, the venue, and the seating. Wonderful. Okay, so we have a, uh, in addition to a letter from a sponsor, we have a motion by Councilmember Murphy. I will count Vice Chair Rutherford's motion as a second. Uh, any other discussion on that item? All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed, any abstentions? Great, so we recommend a one meeting deferral. And number 10. Okay, number 10 is my own bill, um, and it has an amendment which I'm hoping that someone can describe for me. Would planning, the planning table handle that one, or I just want, yeah. It's a, an aerial encroachment. One moment, please. Okay, so this is uh, item number 10, Ordinance Bill 2023 2018. The sponsors are Councilors Withers and Pulley, authorizes 1010 Church Street owner LLC to install, construct, and maintain aerial and underground encroachments in the right of way located at 1010 Church Street. Um, there is an amendment, which uh, I guess since it's my bill, I will go ahead and move. Vice Chair Rutherford, would you make a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, so the amendment just replaces um, the exhibit, updates the exhibit, so that, that's all that it does. Any other discussion on the amendment? Um, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Any uh, opposition? Any abstentions? Uh, so now I would like to move the bill as amended. I will count Vice Chair Rutherford's motion as a second. Um, <laughs> any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Any opposition? Any um, abstentions? Great. So we've taken care of that one. Councilmember Toombs. You are next, so I want to make sure that I can, that you're ready for me. So, um, so next is item number 26, um, Ordinance Bill, uh, Bill 2023 1814. The sponsor is Councilmember Toombs, who's with us today. Um, this amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from RS15 to R20 zoning for property located at 3900 Hides Ferry Road. Um, and uh, there is a substitute, but I will call on Councilmember Toombs to talk us through all of that. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to move the substitute. Do we have a second? 
We have a second, go ahead, please. The substitute, um, so the project that was presented to the community was for a, a DADU, and so the substitute just includes language to ensure that the secondary structure that is built is a DADU. Wonderful. Okay, any other discussion on that? We have a motion and a second on the substitute. All in favor, please say aye. Opposition, abstentions. Okay, so we recommend that. You're now on your bill as amended. Uh, move for approval of substituted. Is there a second? We have a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? We recommend nine in favor, zero against, or abstentions. Let me see. Next is number 36. This is by Council Member Gamble and Styles. It should be Council Member Gamble's area. I think Council Member Gamble is, there you are. I will want to make sure you're ready for me. <laughs> yes, uh, this is BL. 2023-1919. Let me yeah. read the caption really quickly. This amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from RA to SP Zoning for a portion of property located at 4808 Buena Vista Pike, uh, covering 45.64 acres to permit a non-residential development. And you have you have an amendment, and Councilmember Toombs also has an amendment. So I will let please yeah. let us know how you'd like to proceed. I would like to withdraw my amendment, and uh, because. Council Member Toombs has an amendment and what we've been trying to do is just submit one amendment. Most of the amendments relate to District 2. We have had, uh, this this property sits right on the border of District 2 and District 3. Right. And District 3, of course, has had many meetings and, and has put conditions and improvements to the bill that are actually in the bill. And District 2 has had meetings as well and has uh, conditions and suggestions, and that is what is in the amendment, in both amendments, really. Uh, so for that reason, I don't see the need to have two amendments, so I'm withdrawing uh, Amendment 1. Okay, so Councilmember Gamble withdraws Amendment 1. Um, and then we would be on to Amendment 2 by Councilmember Toombs. And is there any additional commentary on that or in your... So both both uh, council members uh, are in agreement on the amendment. Yes, however, I do have one um, question or clarification or, or on that second amendment uh, from council member Toombs. It stipulates no warehouse uses uses, and uh, there's a concern that some of the tenants, uh, although they will be having retail and office space on the front of uh, those buildings one and two that space in the back of their um, of their tenant area would be allowed to manufacture and dish and, and, and distribute small uh, light industrial manufacturing mm -hmm. and light industrial. Okay, so um, I will count that as a, a, a second, at least to move Amendment 2. Okay. So it is before it's for discussion. Can we call on the planning table to maybe yeah. help us talk through those questions? So, um, oh, there we go. So light manufacturing is permitted in buildings one and two. It's just the warehousing that's sort of restricted, but warehousing could, or, warehousing or inventory stock could be a, an accessory used to a principal retail use. But that delineation between whether it's the principal or the accessory would fall to the zoning administrator. And I can't speak for Joey because I'm not in Joey's head. Okay, so currently uh, warehousing does, in, uh, in, uh, light industrial includes, um, what did you just say? I'm sorry, repeat that. <laughs> So when we're thinking about land uses, we're thinking about what the principal use is. And so if your principal use is warehousing, the main thing that you're doing is warehousing storage of goods and materials. If your principal use is light manufacturing, the main thing that you're doing is light manufacturing. You may also store some goods as part of that light manufacturing activity, but your principal use would be light manufacturing. And so there are always going to be accessory uses that go along with those principal uses. Um, if, you, if you think about office space, they always generally have some storage also, but I don't think that we would call that warehousing. It's just an accessory to the office. And so what the amendment is saying is that the principal use cannot be 
warehousing. Does that thank answer you. your question? Yes, thank you for that clarification. And we have a member of the public. Do you wish to speak on this item, Mr. Cooper? I'll go ahead and let you chime thank in. Thank you, since you're here. John Cooper with Holland and Knight, representing Al Nyer, the developer on this project. Uh, what we can, what the developer can agree to is to have the front of the building be office and retail, but the back be warehouse. So we we couldn't. We wouldn't. We can't leave it up to a determination that that the principal use is retail. So it would need to just the amendment would need to designate the front area as being for retail and office and other non warehouse uses. But the back of the property would need to be available for warehousing if needed. And does it any other comments from either? Either of the sponsors or um, Councilmember Toombs, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. So, in recent years, there have been several warehouses that have been built on White's Creek Pike uh, against the the wishes of the community that lives there. Um, this is another property that borders the Haynes Manor neighborhood, which is a historically African American neighborhood. That is a huge neighborhood, about 900 homes. Uh, and they are very adamantly against warehousing. Uh, in talking to uh, the development team, uh, their main concern is the, the market and, and, and what tenants they can attract. I know there's been ample discussion between them and the District 2 community about having no warehousing in the buildings one and two. Um, the community has asked for you know retail and things like that, and we know that's market driven. However, there is some concern that the default will be warehousing, and that is what the community is very much against. And so I'd have to push back on having any type of warehouse. I understand it as an accessory use, but as a primary use, I'd have to push back on that in buildings one and two. Councilmember Gamble. Thank you. Is there an appetite then to say uh, warehousing with the exception of accessory use is prohibited? Yeah, right, warehousing as a is not prohibited. So warehousing, unless it's as a, an accessory use, something that effect. As the amendments currently drafted, you could theoretically have an accessory warehouse attached to a retail or light manufacturing. But again, that's the determination for the zoning administrator to say this is accessory versus being principal. If not leaving it up to the zoning administrator to make that determination, is there a way to clarify it in the bill? I, I don't I don't know that there is because you typically don't define accessory uses in that way because they are accessory and the sort of act of defining it as permitted implies that it would be more than accessory. It would be a permitted use. Right. So, yeah. I mean, accessory are typically... Um, um, you know, limited, and and uh, if you looked at it, you would know that the principal use is office or whatever it is, and then there's some other accessory use, which in an office might be a coffee shop or, or whatever it may be, but it's it's clear that it's a subordinate to and supplemental to the principal use, and so I think that I, I think that probably by defining it, you might be sort of exceeding that definition of accessory. Both of your mics are on, so you're both, you both are sort of co-sponsors on this one, so I'm just going to, I'm not going to pick and choose, I, just let us know what you, you ladies decide. I would like to move forward with approval of Amendment 2. Amendment 2. Okay, so we have a second. Um, so for Amendment 2, we have a motion for approval. Any discussion from committee members? I think, um, okay, so all in favor of Amendment 2, please say Aye. aye. Any opposed? I hear no opposed. If anyone is opposed, please raise your hands. Okay, so I think that I think we have approval for Amendment 2. So we are um, we are now on the bill as amended. And I will uh, go to the lead sponsor, Councilmember Campbell. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to move for approval. All right, so we have a as motion. As amended. Uh, and the second. We have a motion and a second for approval of the bill as amended. Any other discussion from committee members? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 
Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, so we recommend approval of it as amended, nine in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. And I appreciate having this discussion in committee rather than on the floor, because that's what these committees are for. Um, okay, so next is number 57, and we are back to Councilmember Toombs. Uh, item number 57 uh, is Ordinance Bill 2023-1940 um, by Councilmember Toombs, amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from RS10 to SP Zoning for property located at 3101 Doak, D-O-A-K Avenue, um, south of the intersection of Doak Avenue and Haley Avenue, covering 2.53 acres to permit 14 detached multifamily residential units, um, and we do have an amendment from Councilmember Toombs, and I will go to Councilmember Toombs and let us know how you'd like to proceed. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to move the amendment. Okay. Um, is there a second on the amendment? I will second your amendment. Uh, folks are not. Uh, please tell us about your amendment. The amendment uh, limits the uh, height of the homes to two stories. Limits it to two stories. Okay. Any other discussion on the amendment? All in favor of the amendment, please say aye. Any, absten any opposition, any opposed, any abstentions? Okay, so we recommend the amendment. And you're now on your bill as amended. Thank you, I'd like to move for approval as amended. Do we have a second? We have a second. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Any, op any opposed, any abstentions? Great. And we are making decent time. Um, Councilmember Toombs, we're back to you. Uh, for item number 71, <laughs> um, this is Ordinance Bill 2023, 1954 for Councilmember Toombs amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from R10 to SP Zoning for properties located at 3312 and 3320 Curtis Street um, to permit 28 multifamily residential units. Um, the sponsor has a letter and is also here and has an amendment. And Councilmember Toombs, how would you like to proceed? Thank you, Chair, I'd like to move my amendment. Okay, do we have a second? We have a second. Uh, please go ahead with your so, amendment and let us know what it does. The amendment requires the developer to work with NDOT to identify and install any traffic calming measures. Okay. At the developer's expense. At the developer, yeah, that's always great. Um, any other discussion on the amendment? All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed, any abstentions? You're on your bill as amended, council member. Thank you, chair, move for approval as amended. Second, we have a second. Um, any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed, any abstentions? Councilmember Toombs. Next item is ordinance item number 78, ordinance bill 2023-1961 by Councilmember Toombs amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing from CS, excuse me, from CL and RA to MULA zoning for properties located at 2605 and 2611 Old Buena Vista Road and 1001 A and B West Trinity Lane, covering 1.08 acres. Um, we have a letter from the sponsor. The sponsor is also here, and the sponsor has a substitute. And Councilmember Toombs, how would you like to proceed? Thank you, Chair. I'd like to move the substitute. Do we have a second? We have a second on the substitute. What does it do? Substitute adds the NS designation to prove its short-term rentals. Okay. Any other discussion on the substitute? All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And you're now on your bill as substituted. Move for approval as substituted. Second, we have a second. Um, any other discussion? Um, all in favor, please say aye. Any opposed, any abstentions? A substitute from Councilman Pulley. Not present. We don't have a letter. Is there? 
Councilmember Pulley, for a second, I thought that you weren't here. So I bet, I bet you haven't been literally overlooked many times in the past. So um, let me uh, <laughs> let me go ahead and read this one off and I'll see if I can get a committee member to move the subject. This is item number 82, Ordinance Bill 2023-1965 by Councilmember Pulley amends the Metro Zoning Code by amending the Lipscomb University Institutional Overlay District for various properties located south of Grandview Drive and east of Granny White Pike, covering 116.27 acres, zoned R10 and C. In and located within the Lipscomb University Institutional Overlay District to expand the boundaries of the overlay and modify the master plan. Um, Vice Chair Rutherford, would you move the bill and maybe the substitute for us? Motion on the bill and motion on the substitute. Wonderful. Do we have a second? That'll save us a couple of seconds probably, and I will now go to Councilmember Pulley to talk us through this one. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Don't feel bad. I think uh, hiding behind uh, Councilmember Sledge's force field makes me invisible, especially when I raise my hand. Um, <laughs> the uh, the uh, substitute it merely is a result of uh, a lot of work uh, on the part of uh, Lipscomb and uh, and the community. We've had several community meetings and a lot of community feedback, and the consensus is that they wanted to carve out the parcels that were on the west side of Belmont Boulevard in the institutional overlay. So uh, uh, this is basically at the request of the community and at the request of Lipscomb because there's no urgent need for those parcels. I believe there are four of them to be in the uh, overlay. So the substitute simply carves that out and uh, keeps everything else in. Wonderful, and we have a representative from Lipscomb is here as well, is that correct? We do, Any we do. other commentary on that? Okay, great. Just wanted to like to check on that if sure. we can, so, because Lipscomb's a great community partner, so we want to make sure that we're all still working together well. Sounds yes, like we they don't. are, um, <laughs> and I appreciate you uh, saying that when me being derelict in my comments, thank you. All right, so we have uh, a motion and a second on the substitute. Any other discussion on the substitute? All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And now, Councilmember Pulley, uh, um, we have your bill as substituted. Any other discussion on that? No, I think it pretty much speaks for itself. It's a, it, it's a planning bill. There's no immediate uh, uh, construction of any sort that's going along with this. This is. Uh, basically the 37th floor view of what they want to do uh, moving forward the uh, institution. So that's what this document does. This gives everybody a vision of, of what they see coming in the future. Great, and so we already have a motion uh, on the um, bill as substituted. Um, all in favor, please say aye. Any opposed, any abstentions? Terrific, thank you, Councilmember Pulley. Councilmember Swope, you're up next. All right, let me read the caption. This is item number 83, Ordinance Bill 2023-1966 by Councilmember Swope amends the Metro Zoning Code by changing a specific plan for properties located at 6415 and 6419 Holt Road and 6401 Nolensville Pike at the southern corner of Nolensville Pike and Holt Road, zones SP and CL, and partially located within the corridor design overlay district, covering 37.11 acres to permit a mixed-use development with non-residential units and 153 single-family attached residential units. Let me first call on Vice Chair Rutherford for a motion on the bill and the substitute, if we can. Motion on the bill and motion on the substitute. Great, thank you so much. Is there a second? We have a second. Um, go ahead to Councilmember Swope. Talk us through it. Thank you, sir. Um, I, I think everybody's right, already familiar with this. Too. Sorry about that. But yeah, I just need to move an amendment on this. Okay, so we have a motion on your amendment. Yep, the, amendment, the amendment does two things. One, it restricts the community to 55 and up. Uh, and, and two, it puts certain things in lieu of a traffic study that is currently being done, and, and the traffic study is taking forever because NDOT's, or excuse me, TDOT is currently widening Nolansville Road, or at least about to begin that process, which throws any current traffic study out the window. Um, yeah. So it, it's, <clears throat> that's all the amendment does. Wonderful. Any other discussion on the amendment? Of which we already have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed, any abstention? All right, so we're now on the bill as amended. Any other discussion? 
All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed, any abstention? All right, we've got you taken care of for that one. Now for the moment of truth, we can, Councilmember Rosenberg, you're up. Um, so this is item number 85, Ordinance BL 2023-1968 as amended. Uh, by Councilman Rosenberg amends um, the Metro Zoning Code by changing from AR to A to SP Zoning uh, for property located at 1084 Morton Mill Road at the current terminus of Mortonville and partially located within a floodplain overlay district covering 43.87 acres to permit a 417 multifamily residential unit development. Um, Vice Chair Rutherford, would you make a motion on at least on the Bill and then Councilmember Rosenberg has an amendment. So move approval of the bill. Okay, so we have the bill before us. Uh, would you also make a motion on amendment number one by Councilmember Rosenberg? A motion on the amendment. Amendment one. Great. Thank you for that. Second. We have a second, um, and we will now go to Councilmember Rosenberg. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the amendment that is before us um, finishes. Uh, some protections that I referenced in the meeting last uh, two weeks ago. Um, it creates some um, enforcement mechanisms around keeping Coley Davis Road open to two-way traffic at all times by creating a two-day stop work order as a penalty for uh, any additional lane closure there. Uh, it also sets out the specifics for ensuring that construction traffic doesn't use Morton Mill Road, which is a residential street. It says that uh, it, it calls for a log of vehicles to be kept and for that to be available for inspection by NDOT. Um, in the event that the uh, traffic exceeds what's allowed or that it's the log is found to be fraudulent in any way, uh, it cuts off access to Morton Mill for two weeks, and if that's violated, creates a one-week stop work order on the entire project. It also uh, prohibits construction vehicles from parking on Morton Mill Road. Uh, so I ask for the committee's approval on these. Okay, let's get, um, thank you for that. Any other discussion on Amendment 1, which is by Councilmember Rosenberg? I don't see any additional discussion, so all in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so we do have a recommendation for Amendment 1. We do have a series of four other amendments by Councilmember Hurt. What do you recommend that we do? Have a recommendation? Councilmember Rosenberg, what, uh, since Councilmember Hurt is not present for her amendments, what, what would you, is your preference to at least talk through them now or to wait for the floor discussion? I don't think that they're worth discussion, but I'd leave that to the committee. Okay, um, does anyone on the committee, and I'll need a, you to raise your hand, uh, but if, if any a member of the committee would like to move any of the four amendments, please raise your hand. I do not see anyone uh, who feels comfortable moving the amendments, and, and since none, the sponsor is not present, I, I would not myself want to move them at this time, but we can still discuss them on the floor. So right now we have a recommendation of Amendment 1. We do have a, a recommendation on the bill as well with a second. So um, I'm assuming you'd like to move the bill as amended with Amendment 1. Please. Okay. So all in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, well, we recommend approval of the bill with Amendment 1. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. And if I'm not mistaken, that brings us to the end of the agenda. So uh, an hour and maybe 10 minutes. So that's not too bad for more than 100 items. So um, this concludes the business of the Planning and Zoning Committee. Thank you, everyone.